like me and you love underwater macro photography, you might come back from a dive with really sore wrists. I've just upgraded from a crop sensor DSLR to a much heavier and larger full frame camera. And with that comes the extra strain and stress on your wrists of a heavier rig. So what I've decided to do is to measure the actual weight of the camera in water to discover exactly how much float and how much buoyancy my camera will need underwater to prevent me from having sore wrists after every dive. So let's go into the pool at Indigo Scuba and find out exactly how much buoyancy this new setup will need to protect my wrists on future dives. So according to Dion and the travel scale, it weighs 9.3 kilograms. And we're now going to have a look to see what it weighs in water to find out how much buoyancy we're going to need to make it neutrally buoyant. So the in-water weight of my camera setup is 2.51 kilograms. So that's the amount of lift I'm going to need to make it neutrally buoyant under the water. So the next thing now is to look at the buoyancy options that I have and to decide what I'm going to use. So we've calculated the in-water weight of my system to be 2.5 kilograms. So for it to be neutrally buoyant in the water, I would need to add 2.5 kilograms worth of flotation. So I'm really lucky because I have these float blocks that I can add to my um, strobe arms. And this gives me quite a few options to play with. So I've calculated in order for my system to be slightly negatively buoyant, which is how I like to dive, I need to add six of these blocks to each side. And that should just give me about slightly under 2.5 kilograms. There's another option that I have though, and that is to add shorter arms, which are less cumbersome, and have four floats on either side, and add a ring um, float to my macro port. Now the great thing about a ring float is it helps with the trim of your housing, especially when you add a wet diopter to the front, which tends to make um, the housing a bit heavy and pull the port downwards, which can be very tiring on your wrists. So I'm going to give both options a go and I'll let you know how it goes. Hi, I'm back and we've had incredible diving over the last four weeks here in my hometown of Gordons Bay, which for those of you who don't know, it's just outside Cape Town in South Africa. We've had really amazing diving conditions and I've been able to put both my wide angle and my macro underwater setups to really good use. It's been a huge learning curve for me, but I must say I'm absolutely loving my camera. It's the Nikon D850 and I have the 105mm macro lens as well as the Nikon 8-15 circular fisheye. So let's have a look at what I came up with. So what I originally thought I was going to use was three floats on one arm and three on another. But as you know, when you're shooting wide angle, you actually have to pull your strobes quite far back. And what I was finding is that because I had so much lift on this arm, it was actually tilting the dome port down, which is really interesting for me. So on the next dive, I took two of the floats off, but just left the one, but of course left the three on my longer arms. And I found this actually is perfect for me. But as I said, you know, everything is different for everybody. This is what works for me and I hope it'll give you some sort of indication of what will work for you. As you know, I absolutely love macro underwater photography. And for me, it was really important to get my flotation of my housing correct. I also dive with a dry suit. So a housing that is too heavy also causes buoyancy problems where the camera is pulling you down and you're getting floaty feet. So at the end of the day, what I discovered worked best for me was three floats on one arm, three floats on another and the equivalent of three more floats on this arm too. I do have a longer arm, but I found that two shorter arms together worked so much better for me and it was less, less cumbersome under the water. On my first dive, I didn't attach my float ring. I wanted to see what, the, what it was going to be like. And I did find that the front port did pull the camera down. So on the second dive, I did add 
the float ring and it's sorted that out completely. And this is my this is my setup and this is what works for me. Give it a go, see what works for you. But this is just a starting point. Whatever you do, happy dives. And I hope you really have some wonderful dives this year.